Hey, what's up? So this is the second video about the create async func. We will start by reading the overview section. I think this is one of the most important thing you need to read about uh, in, the, in this documentation. So the create async func is a function that accepts a read on action, Redux action type string, just a normal string. This is the action type and a callback function that should return a promise. So it accepts two arguments, a string, this is the action type, and a function that should always return a promise. And this is very important. It generates a promise life cycle action types, strings, which means the strings, on the, based on the action type prefix you pass in, the first argument, and returns a func action creator. This is the one that you will dispatch using the dispatch function that will run the promise callback. This is the second argument. It will run it and dispatch the life cycle action based on the returned promise. So I think everything here is clear maybe the life cycle action is not so or the life cycle action for the promise so a promise in javascript can have three states or yeah can have at any time one of these three states the first one is pending this is when you execute the promise it will it will be pending um, the second state after pending could be could be resolved or rejected rejected if there is an error resolved if the promise runs successfully so the create async func will generate these three action uh, types based on these three uh, states. So fulfilled, which means resolved, resolved or rejected or pending. And it will dispatch actions based on these uh, three states. So this is basically it. So this abstracts the standard recommended approach for handling async like request lifecycle. So it does not generate any reducer functions Okay, since it does not know what data you are fetching. How you want to track the loading state or how the data you retain needs to be processed. This makes sense. You should write your own reducer logic that handle, handle, handles these actions. So like we said here, this will generate multiple actions. The first one is called pending based on the promise lifecycle. The second one is called uh, rejected. The third one, called fulfilled which stands for resolved so you need to write reducer for these three actions that will be generated from the create async func okay so with whatever loading state and processing logic is appropriate for your own app so this is the basic example as you can see they are importing the create async func and the create slice from the library this is like an imaginary uh, utility library that will send some data so this is the get the fetch user by ID. This is the create async func. It, this is the action type. And this is the function that will return a promise. And any async function will return a promise of the returned value here. So this will return a promise that will resolve to the response to data. And yeah, so they, this will be a promise that will resolve with this data. And the action types will be generated is based on this promise that will be returned. And as you can see here in the extra reducer, so the reducers for the create async func will be added inside the extra reducers, not the reducers. And as you can see, this is how they handed the fulfilled, which means the resolved uh, state or the resolved action. As you can see, this is the state, this is the action, and here they are putting some things inside this entity's array. And remember, we are using Emma internally in this library, so you can do this in an immutable way. And as you can see, the create async func returned an, uh, an action creator, which you can dispatch like this. So dispatch and just call it. And this argument here will be this here, the user ID. And that's basically it. So you can handle it like this. This is for the fulfilled, or just remove fulfilled and put pending, it will be handled for pending, which means whenever you just dispatch the action, that uh, action, that reducer will be executed. So yeah, I think that's just uh, a small introduction. But in the second video, we'll start writing some actual code. But before that, we need some API to work with. So there is a lot of services, but I, create, I created a while ago my own that will generate an API as fast as possible. So I will put a link in the description for it. It's called Pulux. You will go here to generate, you will add a prototype, let's add maybe comments, 
hit create you can come here and put a use a UUID maybe email first name or phone name so the paragraph then you will hit generate and it will it gives you this uh, an array of comments based on these things that you are specified maybe you can put a thousand it will also do that with no problem uh, but this can generate also an API so let me generate that API for you but before that you can actually save some save these models that you created I already saved a couple just to like put us ahead I need this is the dashboard this is the reports this is the bug requests this is the user groups and these are these models are representing these steps so each one of them will fetch the data from this uh, model and now the only thing you need to do is to hit this this will generate a zip file containing an API with these models and the only thing you need to do is to go unzip it put it in your on any place you want in me in my case I added it inside my desktop and I called the folder Polax API in depth async thunk. The only thing you need to do is npm install after you unzip that and just uh, you can actually just create any four models you want or just a single model it doesn't matter we just want API that retains data right so after you hit npm install you need to type npm run dev and as you can see this will tell you that we have these resources in our API so let's go so this is the dashboard data this is the bug requests and this is the endpoints we will be using for this uh, tutorial in case you want to change the port number for this API just open the package to JSON and change this port to anything you want inside the dev script uh, I think it will be good on your own for this uh, I don't think a beginner will watch this kind of videos but uh, yeah so this is the, this is I think the fastest way to create a mocking API. That's why I created this uh, website. Anyway, so this is it. This is our uh, API, and I think this will make it. This this will be it for this video. The next video we will implement a thunk that will dispatch the dashboard data and display them here uh, at some point. So yeah, thank you.